<clears throat> oh shit here we go again all right hello everyone and welcome so today we got some news we got some news about the helmet system and what's gonna be some additional changes that are coming with it <laughs> and it's not fucking great also another one we have a freezer joining one. us and another one and okay. another one is your is your computer work uh it couldn't get picked up today because traffic is ass so we're okay. gonna try again on the weekend fair enough all right regardless okay before before we get super started here um okay uh helix 54 uh burdenfurt sebastian thank you all for the subs and resubs and zoltan thank you for gifting five subs to david storm azahir uh zakarian wings day and esbjor welcome in to you five okay so with subs and stuff out of the way okay this fuck this is stupid these okay we're just gonna read it or start off with it just gonna read it okay launches near below are two parts of updated slash clarifying information changes to select infused warframe abilities please keep in mind we're still testing playing around with the values for each hence why the values are not present below the following only apply to infused warframe abilities rhino's roar less damage increase mirage's eclipse less damage increase and less damage reduction war cry less attack speed increase protea less duration not larva less range and wukong's defy has its armor capped which i think it already did but it has it, it has it two cap it's capped twice i guess is it capped lower how much lower i don't know it already it's already, it already capped that, 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 that this ability is already capped i don't know if de knows that but it's it's capped again uh so there's that so it won't even be 1500 armor that you get from defy which by the way this ability is already bad i would like to point some i want to point something out really quick here and i also want to tell you it's not my fault uh, if we look at the tier list and we go by what grades were the best graded we have rhino's roar larva uh, larva from nidus protea's dispensary and we have valkyr's war cry as the top four abilities with the best overall grades as i went over them uh and then also on here you know we have like mirage's eclipse is on here and like there's there's some other stuff in here definitely not wukong's defy which by the way we just go a to z uh has where is wukong's defy my brain can't even see oh no whoa, whoa. I, I organized the wrong thing no wonder I can't find it hate to see as a 1.1 getting only <laughs> getting only two B rankings not getting any A's did Wukong's Defy received literally no A's for anyone and was only an okay choice for two Warframes and was like a better than nothing choice for three Warframes so I don't know I don't know why that's getting nerfed or is it who knows it's already a capped ability okay two things here why do these infused warframe abilities have these rules if it was apparent in player feedback and play testing that these infused warframe abilities had the potential to be over be the overwhelming choice which is not ideal instead of changing the ability outright due to those concerns we decided to give them slight rules when infused okay so here's the thing this is this is what's known colloquially as a fucking bad take okay it was apparent in player feedback and play testing that these infused warframe abilities had the potential to be the overwhelming choice the solution to that problem is not to nerf them it is not to nerf them if we look at my tier list we can very easily see that there are a lot of fucking d's on this board You'll see that there's a couple of the interspersed A's. There's like a lot of C's. There's D's. And down here, things get like much, much better. Why not just buff the abilities that are not even a choice? And we're, by the way, this stream, we're going to go over a way to make it so that those options would not be nearly as compelling anyway, because it's not hard. It's really not difficult. And I want to make that super fucking clear. So we're going to do it during this stream. But yeah so they've decided that there's that uh and then the segment acquisition we now know it is from the rank three of the entrati syndicate which i said it wouldn't be any sooner than rank three so that it makes sense like it's nice that it's rank three not rank five that's good uh also this is now locked to mr8 which where is that actually said here 
I think that's I think that's actually on the main post of this, which we'll go to. If we just go to page one. Page number one, go. We just go to page one, I believe that's changed. Yeah, yeah, here we go. Right here. Uh and mastery rank 15 crossed out eight prerequisites. So this is now MR8, which by the way. We do not intend to let newer players unlock this system. We intentionally place the segment deep into progression to ensure only experienced players could access the segment and begin their journey with Hellman. That's not what this is. We know from data that also like DE has given us that the bulk question, of people that are active players in Warframe are MR10+. Plus. Why not leave the changing until after we got the system? Shut up yeah, leaving the changing mind. until after we got the system. I fully agree. Here's the thing. Okay, okay. So we know that the bulk of active players in Warframe are MR10 and higher. So MR8 is not for veteran players. It's literally before the bulk of the players who play Warframe like are. Like this is whatever. I don't really care. All this means is that people can have like offload Warframes that they have the primes for earlier. Not a big deal. But I want to I want to really go out of my way to state like this does not line up with what their like initial intention was. Uh, and clearly, this is based on their feedback that people aren't MR15, which they aren't. Um, and they've knocked it down to eight. I feel like they probably should have just knocked this down to whatever, like, the most populated MR was. Like, if they were like, okay, it's MR11. Like, if that's, like, the MR. Or maybe just 10, as we know from data prior. Uh, so there's that. Now, here's the fucking thing. This shit... It doesn't work this way. Because, like... <laughs> obviously... We have Roar, Larva, and Dispensary, which are very good for completely different reasons. And I really want to point that out. They're good for completely different reasons. And because they're good for completely different reasons, that gives us a lot of things to do to give people other things to value. Because are people going to value a damage increase? Yes, they are going to value a damage increase. They absolutely are going to do that. DE already knew that. Any insinuation that they did not already know that whenever they decided to give everyone roar is ridiculous. Uh, Larva, this groups enemies up. This one could be overlooked as an ability that is very strong, um, but reducing the radius of this is not helpful at all. And duration on dispensary, like this gives out resources. If DE didn't want this to be a thing, they should have given us another power. Even with reduced duration, depending on how much it's reduced, I guess they could just make it last two fucking seconds and then it doesn't do anything then that'll be a thing. And then Valkyr, you're giving out Valkyr's entire kit. What did you expect to happen? It's the only ability on Valkyr anyone gives a flying fuck about. And it's the only decent one. So like lowering the attack speed increase on this is like, why? You already knew what you were giving out. So these abilities are going to be nerfed for the purposes of giving them to other frames. The base abilities on the Warframes are not being nerfed. I want to make that super clear. It's just whenever you give it to other Warframes. So no base abilities are being nerfed here. But like, it's very, very backwards to be nerfing these abilities instead of giving people other options. So let's just start at the top. If we, if we're gonna, if we're gonna say right now, what, what do we, what do we have on this list that is very good and we know it's very good? Roar, Larva, Dispensary, different reasons. Damage, uh, grouping or killing and like also farming. Uh, and then also just energy economy and also health orbs in some minor cases. That's what these three abilities do. Completely different things. What is not on this fucking list? What's not on this list? Can anyone tell me what's like kind of not on this list? Because it's pretty easy. Does anyone know? No, armor stripping is on this list. It's not amazing armor stripping, but it's but it's uh, on this list. Movement abilities. Greater War, you fucking nailed it. There are not movement abilities on this list. Like there are in terms of like, if you want to call Neja's Firewalker that, but there's not good movement abilities on this list. So I'm going to give you an instant thing that DE should have considered doing in order to make other options more compelling. Take Ash. We're going to take Ash and we're going to take his three and we're going to make it so it doesn't have to target enemies in order for you to teleport. And you teleport at like a slightly lowered distance at like 70% of the usual range of it whenever you don't have a target for it. We're going to not do Shuriken. We're going to put his three in here instead. That is a really compelling movement ability. It's an upgrade that Ash needs anyway. And it makes it a really, really compelling movement ability. So that's super good. 
Uh, Atlas is Petrify. We already have, like, there's there's already some compelling reasons to use this, so this one's fine. Banshee's Silence is, like, also fine. There's, like, some niche cases for this for people to use. Uh, Baruch's Lull, you could give out Baruch's one. There are Warframes that would use that. Would that be maybe kind of broken? Yeah, but apparently you think Roar and stuff is kind of broken. So, like, you need, to, you need to either remove those abilities from the pool as opposed to nerfing them because it doesn't make any sense and it just adds extra complications to the system that don't need to happen or like change what you're giving other warframes like there there's not like you didn't have to give out equinox's rage and rest you could give out pacify and rest and that's pretty compelling hello nerfs what yeah they're nerfing abilities that are entering the pool there's like these these abilities are getting nerfed for the purposes of putting them on other warframes because they think that they're going to be too strong but like it's very obvious I'll also defy is on here for whatever reason who knows why no one can say uh but they're nerfing these five abilities this this is not even confirmed as a nerf Wukong's ability already does this so we have no idea what the fuck this means uh but these these five abilities are getting nerfed for the purposes of putting them on other warframes if you thought that these five abilities are too strong give us something else literally yeah it's like two different people did the list like the list was created and it was like there are some really good compelling options on here and some weird choices that don't make sense and the weird choices that don't make sense didn't get changed the options that seemed good and compelling got changed like the things that people were excited about and wanted to farm for and do and get on their other warframes and optimize and like do cool shit, that that is getting nerfed and the options that are shit that no one cares about like fucking nix nix is giving out her one and like mag's giving out her one loki's giving out decoy like limbo's banish could be like buffed in a different way to make it way better like mind control does nothing nix could easily give out her two that's a way more compelling option like why would we not buff instead of nerf here there's a bunch of abilities that need help and de have gone out of their way to say some abilities are getting buffed for the purposes of this to make them better hey, but they didn't do that that's pretty good they literally didn't do that Yeah, like they literally hyped this up and like put out some cool shit and then the community went hey look at this good shit want we want to do this good shit and they went no preemptively nerf some abilities and without any solid numbers yeah without WTF. numbers too. yeah there's a bunch of shit abilities on here that like they could have just chosen better abilities like legitimately like whenever you you think about it and you're like okay if we're getting roar and you want abilities in this list to compete with each other and you don't want one to be the overwhelming choice which is clearly the thing here because they say it right here it was apparent in player feedback and playtesting that these infused warframe abilities have the potential to be the overwhelming choice if you don't want that to happen then all you have to do is make the other options also compelling and is that more difficult yes however this is a really fucking important point if they released this whole thing and or like even before that if they're getting the feedback that these abilities are the ones people are going to choose most and these are the most compelling ones why and then here's what you do this is wild i know this is crazy guys you guys are gonna you guys are gonna it's gonna look and blow your minds it's a wild thing to do you release it you let it be how it is and then a couple weeks go by and you're like okay uh we've decided that we're like gonna change ash's ability that he gives out and it's gonna be teleport and also base changes to teleport are going to be that it no longer needs a target in order for you to teleport so now that's a hyper compelling movement option for any warframe whoa okay hold on we need to reevaluate everybody go farm ash everyone's farming ash now that's buffed let's change some things let's do some stuff let's get back in the helmet system it's been a couple weeks i want to put that on a couple warframes do all these things these changes these buffs don't need to come right away like if they if they think it's going to be unbalanced and it's like oh well you're going to have too many people using roar okay well then give us other options that are actually any good like if you like there's no like real defensive ability on this list fucking put revenants defensive ability out here i don't remember what its fucking name is but no one is using reeve right like no one's gonna fucking use reeve this is a piece of shit ability it's d's across the board it's garbage trash when not combined with his one give her give people his fucking mesmer skin mesmer skin thank you mesmer skin give mesmer skin out and suddenly it's like oh shit that's a really compelling defensive ability hmm now we need to evaluate that and go in and interact with this system some more it's literally like you can improve these different abilities that are available in the system and change out the abilities or add more as time goes on 
to make the system more compelling if you think it's not compelling enough with different options at current okay is that more work yes Damn, but it's also son, like the right way to do it is. so warrior think of the three dollars i just it kind of irks what me i don't get little. is why the hell didn't de the just... uh difference in the way you talked about it starting out and yeah. the way you're talking about it here what do you mean and that is they wouldn't just give people loki's too was like a big sentiment when you were first starting out well yeah but then they decided like they to give out roar and stuff well, yeah, but like they wouldn't just do that. And I just want to, like, there is literally no world where they would ever give Mesmer skin to a good Warframe. Like, ever. I mean, but like, I think that that conversation that's changes whenever they're like that's giving out the just one. Right. You're right. But the thing is, if they're giving out like Warcry, Eclipse, Roar, like that, that kind of, if they're giving out that high tier stuff, then they, you need. To, like you have to be able to have abilities that compete with that right like if you didn't want to have good abilities like that in the system rhino's got a one mirage has a two Valkyr has a one like there there are many other options like you could give out nidus is one would that be shit on other warframes it absolutely would i'm of the mind that they never should have released roar in the first place you're right i agree because it, it got our hopes up way too fucking high well because it was also, awesome I also just find Roar to be... I'm gonna get flack. I found we put way too much weight onto Roar, I feel. What do you mean? Like, I... Because I'm of the stance that we do enough fucking damage and Roar is just overkill and we don't fucking need it and we overhyped it. I mean... Like, I mean, it, based on, like, the information we had, it's, like, the best ability for a lot of Warframes. If you're a... I don't know. It just feels like Unga Bunga stack more damage, and it feels like a lot of, a lot of it was just like ignoring. We were looking at a tree and missing the forest. I felt. I don't know about that because like here, here, the thing with Roar is it allows you to do a lot of different things. Does it? It really does because like for the people that like like let's say for example you enjoy a weapon that's not very good. If you just use Roar, you can just use like even more so whatever you want at like much higher levels, right? So like it's it's giving you access to things that normally wouldn't be very good <clears throat> also for like eidolon group comps and stuff it makes it more interesting and like bringing it to like even like profit taker it's like maybe the warframes i take the profit taker change for me personally if i have access to roar on this warframe like like i don't have an issue with roar being considered good on frames where the kit in terms of like their actual abilities is lacking damage Right. But when it comes to the point where you're overkilling an enemy with 40k health with 2 million damage instead of 1 million damage, it's like, wow, you did it. I mean, yeah, but like, there's some more frames that don't actually have a better choice because they didn't they didn't give us other compelling options, right? Like, there there's the exact thing I just said. If they were going to give out Roar, huge damage increase, super great. However, if you, like, gave Korra the ability to suddenly, like, teleport with Ash's teleport and it was buffed to not need an enemy target... I might go with that. That's a really high tier choice for a Warframe like Korra that already has a bunch of damage, right? Like, the problem is not that, like, Roar is so insanely good. It's that, like, on the Warframes that don't need more damage, there's still actually not a good option for them. I kind of view it as, like, you just put Roar as, like, a default when you can't think of anything better. When, like, yeah, it's damage, but you're fixing a problem that isn't there, I feel in most cases i mean for a lot of warframes they have that problem because like they? yeah because like if we look I, at here hold on because a lot of it's like i don't know if people just haven't held an akana prime or like held a fucking good weapon like i, I, I mean a, a lot a lot of people do not hold a good weapon well, like for okay for, for ash he's an a plus on roar what 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 else is competing with ash like ash is a warframe that like demonstrably does enough damage like, what would he rather have on this list? Right? Like, is there another compelling option for him? Because I don't think that there is. Like, I would love for there to be a different compelling option. Like, Larva, sure. Yeah, Larva, which I think is pretty highly rated on his list here, which is pretty close. Uh, here, He's like B rank for him. That? Oh, yeah, yeah, I got you. Uh, I gotta go through this. Just so I have something to quickly look at. Because if I just 
to like get my feet in the water as quickly as possible, the only ability I feel doesn't deserve to be on that list in the most part is Defy, because Defy is like whatever. But I can see DE's side on the other sides, even if I don't really like it. Yeah. Because I can kind of see it with each of the five cases, and that is they're trying to encourage creativity instead of just unga bunga damage. And that's the case of they shouldn't have chosen those abilities. Well, yeah. And, or two, <clears throat> they're trying to like not encourage passivity, which is really tough because that's what we've been kind of doing for the past couple of years. But I'm, I, okay, but at the point where they've chosen Roar, you either, you, you need to just not, you just need to unchoose Roar, which is a thing you can do. You can just choose Rhino's one. Like it, That's what I feel like they should have done. They should have just given us the shit ability. That's what they did with Trinity. Yeah, they like, tried to buff it. Yeah, that's what they did with Trinity, exactly. Because there's no world where they're giving us EV or Link, so I'm fine taking Well of Life. Granted, they buffed it. Right. And, like, that's the thing, right? Like, would, would EV even be so bad? We're get, Like, we're getting Protea's dispensary, right? Like, it's like, we're getting dispensary... But they're now reducing the duration of it. Like, is, if Dispenser's too strong, give us a different fucking ability from Protea. Right? If, if Eclipse is too strong, give us Mirage's two. If Elkir's Warcry is too strong, give us her fucking three. I don't care. Buff it. And, like, Wukong, like Wukong defies the weird one here. Nobody knows why this is getting nerfed. Or maybe okay. it's not. So, I say this knowing that they literally did this to Valkyr. Okay. They're not they're not giving away Eevee because it would be too strong. They're not giving away Eevee because it would effectively kill Trinity. I mean, Trinity has Eevee and Bless. She does have Blessing, I know. Yeah. But that's like a unique thing that Trinity has, and that is giving energy to allies in a not shit way. I mean, that's um, what Rhino's Roar is too, right? And that's why they shouldn't have given Roar, but right. here but, we are. But like at, at the at the at the point where we're at, we're we're in and they gave us good abilities. And if they are considering giving us like some of the really good abilities, then it's like, well, you need to give out competing abilities. You can't just choose on Ember to go with Fire Blast whenever you could go with Ember's one, which is a really compelling buff. Because heat damage is very good. Like, why go with Fire Blast when you could just go with her one? That's a way better ability than Fire Blast is. Why go with Rage when you could just go with Pacify on Equinox? Pacify is at least like a build around that some Warframes could use defensively. It's a tough build around, but you could do it. And like Rest is like a solid ability that's on this list. Radio Blind, uh, Radio Radio Blind is half of Excalibur's kit. Asinine, but uh, they wouldn't. Rest and Pacify are both Nightform. They're, that's our two and our three. Yeah. So that's why they wouldn't do that. I like. Like, just being anal about it? I mean, sure, but, like, there's no real reason they couldn't. And, like, on their own, Rest is better than both mm -hmm. Pacify and the other one. What right. the fuck is their day form three? Pacify? Or, or you mean yeah. the other one? The power up one? I have no idea what his name is. Yeah, the power strength one? I don't fucking know. Yeah. So, I feel like they just went with Rest and Rage just because Rest is at least a good out of those four abilities. Provoke. There Provoke. There it is. So yeah, of like rest, rage, pacify, provoke. Rest is obviously the best of the four, so they just chose yeah. her two because of that. Yeah. Well, yeah, or for like Nezha, why Firewalker instead of Chakram? That one's fair. Yeah. And it's like <clears throat> it's just like really, really strange choices on here. When you say his chakram, you mean his two, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's fair. Because if you said it's three, I'd be like, no 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 no. <laughs> yeah. And like Gara, obviously it'd be ridiculous to give out her two, right? Because you can put it on anything but like spectral rage didn't even receive a buff like they didn't even try right spectral rage looked interesting on paper it's just like her one would be would have been like just as middling and i feel like they just chose the best of the two things they had yeah and like at the point where they're giving us like roar eclipse Warcry, dispenser like what just fucking go for garuda's three another compelling option to add to the list on goss fucking throw his one in there you're giving out roar and eclipse and shit these are like the iconic, really great abilities for that Warframe. Just give out Goss's one. Right? Like, on Hydroid, like... 
Uh, Unhydrate is really a better option. I mean, his two would be slightly better. Hydra just needs help. They should have just buffed whatever ability they were going to give out for Hydra. <laughs> Hydra just needs buffs. And like, Limbo's one, make it so you could banish yourself. Like, at the point where we're, we're doing what we're doing here, like, why go and nerf? Like, you either remove these or, like, don't nerf them, right? Buff other shit or remove these. Those are, like, the two right roads. Are they nerfing the helmet or the actual warp ability? Nerfing the helmet. Only the helmet's transferred abilities are going to be nerfed. Which, by the way, also sucks. Because then it's just another, like, layer of things you have to explain to people. There's no reason to do it. It's just an extra unnecessary layer of complication. Another one for Warframe. Why is this a thing? I fucking don't know. Like, they gave out Inaros' Inaros's Desiccation. This is one of the two abilities that he uses, period. Like, they've given out some, like, of the, the major, like, only abilities on some of these Warframes. And, like, they just, they, they really just need to go through buffing instead of nerfing. And if they released it as it stood, with like demonstrably like these being like the best abilities, with these being the best ones, it's like, hey, okay, Roar, Larva, Dispensary, and Warcry are at the top. Let's bring up the abilities that no one fucking uses. Like, let's just go to the bottom of the list and talk about what could be better. Okay, no one uses Nix's Mind Control. Make it Nix's too. Suddenly, boom, really good. Warframes that build for that type of style already have a really excellent armor and shield strip. Cool. Let's change that to Nix's too. Great option for a number of Warframes now. Loki's Decoy. Okay, take Decoy or Switch Teleport. I don't give a fuck which one. And somehow make it good. Or replace it. Like, Loki needs help anyway. Limbo's Banish. You can banish yourself. We're done here. You fucking... Like, there. it's a great ability now. Shocker. Fucking Gara's Spectra Rage. You can add another effect to this ability and suddenly make it good and suddenly compelling. We're done. Like, Frost Ice Wave. Frost just needs a whole rework on his own. But, like... Come on, right? This is not that crazy. Like Zephyr's Making Zephyr's airburst. Like yeah, Zephyr Zephyr's airburst. Uh, buff it again. Make it so that it actually zoops enemies all into one point, and you can cast it super fast and make it cheaper or something like that. Like there's there's ways to make these things good. So, to be specific here, uh, making decoy good, they did that. And it's called Octavius 2. Oh, you right. And the problem is that Loki's decoy is still in the game with yeah. Octavius 2 in the game. Yeah. Assuming they nerf these abilities by 50%, are they still worth it? Hilariously, the answer is for most of them, yeah, probably. The answer is yeah, probably. Like, Octavius 2 is just a superior version of decoy in basically every way. Yeah. Yeah, there, there's so many options on here for, like, easy buffs. Easy buffs to make these abilities way more compelling. Like, legitimately, you could even take Mag's Pull. There's an effect on Mag's Pull. I don't know if you guys know about it, but this ability tries to generate energy orbs. And they could just make it do that better. And then you're like, hmm, generate energy orbs. That's pretty compelling. And you make Mag a little bit better, which is fine. She's not insanely overpowered right now as it is. So, can I go in on this one? Yeah, what up? Okay, so... I've always been of the mind that people who don't know this, by the way, Mags 1 has this effect with energy orbs, and Oberon's 4 has a very similar effect, but with health orbs, where if the mm -hmm. ability kills an enemy, they have a higher percent chance, so I think it's like 15% or some shit, yeah, to like, drop yeah. an energy or a health orb. I think it's like 25 on Mags. I have always been of the mind that getting hit with Paul should debuff an enemy, and then they have that chance, yeah. and, or getting hit with Reckoning should debuff an enemy and then they have yeah. a chance to drop it on kill yeah i agree fully agree yeah exactly if and if you make that buff we're like if, if mag pulls an enemy all the enemies that she pulled on death have a 25 percent chance to drop energy orbs that's pretty fucking compelling that is some fucking energy like chakram, super simple exactly. stuff chakram like I, I believe how it works is like if it bounces on an enemy it just shits out health orbs Whereas this debuffs them, and they have a, ch a higher chance to drop one, essentially. So, like, Chakram, like, a good ability. Yeah, I, th I think Chakram is on death. Because that's been, like, one thing about Oberon's 4 that I've just always been confused about. Like, if you kill enemies with this 4, that just encourages, like, nuke bullshit that DE already doesn't like. 
Yeah. Whereas if you just if you just like went up to a big pack of enemies, debuffed them all with reckoning, and just shot out a bunch of health orbs, your allies would like that. Yeah. And like that's that like also if you if you could generate energy orbs that consistently, that would that would mean you could use the health conversion mod, and like that's an improvement for Oberon technically. And like Mag could justify using energy conversion for her yep. too. Exactly. Because you'd be able to, you'd be like, well, I can generate a lot of energy orbs, so I might as well use them, right? Because Mag could basically you pull a bunch of enemies in a big pack, and then you should hopefully get one energy orb out of it. Yeah. And then you use your energy conversion too on the big boya. Yeah. And then for for like Goss, let's say you kept this as Thermal Center. You didn't even keep it. You didn't you didn't even like switch it to his one. Because switching it to his one is an easy way for it's like, hmm, that's compelling. That's very fast. That's a very compelling option that I could choose. If you keep it as Thermal Center, literally buff this ability just so that it just does its good effect all the time. Yeah, right? that's what I was gonna like, just have it. Yeah. Like, Embers three and Thermal Sunder should act like they're always at full meter. Yeah, exactly. And if, if Embers three acted like it was always at full meter. And it's like, oh, that's, that's a big armor strat. That's a, that's a pretty good fucking ability now. Because it's a fucking forced heat proc with armor stripping on top of it, regardless of the heat proc. Yeah, exactly. And like, that's su that suddenly turns out suddenly that's way, way good. And like on Equinox's rage, legitimately, you could just make the number on this absurd. This is usually a single target ability. So it's like, just make them take a thousand percent extra damage. Does that suddenly like become a compelling option? Actually, yes. Do you guys know? Now, like disruption is the best farming mode for relics if rage made it so they take a thousand percent extra damage it's like oh shit that's fucking big brain that might actually be good like you have to give it you have to put it to a place where it's like oh this is actually usable right and like you could just go through and just do that instead they took the easy road and they're like what are people gonna use oh make them shittier it's like that doesn't actually help because guess what guess what even if if you nerf roar to 20% effectiveness, I'm still fucking choosing it over all of this fucking shit. Over this absolute fucking garbage, I will fucking take it over this. It's not that's not doing anything. You're not improving the choices to be made because the shitty choices are still the shitty choices. I lit literally for these abilities, I would not remove Mesa's one. An ability I don't use. An ability I literally don't do. So it's not it's not helpful. Without Nourish though, I mean yeah, like Nourish is good. Nourish is already fine. Nourish is one of the better ones. I think it's yeah, yeah. It's like yeah, it's number 10. I, so, I already rated Grendel's Nourish as like number 10 on this list. It's already good. That's like a compelling choice for a number of different reasons. It already has reasons. All right. Can I try to argue where they might have been coming from? Yes. Okay. So they introduced this system. You can mix and match Warframe abilities. What's like one thing you immediately kind of think of when you think about that? as like a developer wanting to see your players do a thing. What do you mean? They kind of like this was a big thing. I felt like they kind of really wanted to encourage creativity. Yeah. And then they dropped a big roar shaped fucking thing right on top of the whole system. Well, but that does, OK, All right, here's the thing. I, I know you're going to say it doesn't diminish creativity to have a good choice. Because the, the hard thing, I, I was saying this like before we even got the, the list, if they buff a lot of abilities, like overall, like if you take Mesa's one and you buff it to have no damage cap, that's suddenly a really compelling ability. And now Mesa has four compelling abilities. So what the hell am I going to remove to replace it with someone else's ability? Like, how am I going to make that choice on what to get rid of, right? If you make it a lot of compelling abilities then like creativity go way up. Like if it, it, you need to get it to the point where like you've had so many good choices, I have to look at someone and go, what did you replace on Rhino? And what did you replace it with? Like that's where it should really come from. Because like if we're looking at it, okay, we're, we're going to live in a fantasy world where this list is totally different. And I'm going to give you guys a scenario. I'm Rhino, right? I've got the ability to replace my abilities. There's another Rhino in the party. I look at them and they cast Nidus's Larva. 
and I go, why did you choose Nidus's Larva as opposed to going with uh, fucking Link on Trinity so you could get armor stripping and even more damage reduction to stay alive better? Why did you go with that uh, overtaking Ash's Teleport to be super fast as Rhino? Because like they would have buffed it to make it not need an enemy target. Why did you take that over Equinox so you could get another 1000% damage buff whenever you have really hardy enemies to take? Like, why, why didn't you, why didn't you, why didn't you go with other ability? Not, oh, obviously that's the choice that you made because that's the good one. Just make the abilities good and the choices become harder. The choice becomes easier when you nerf things because you're not buffing the things that currently are not a choice. Creating more choices makes the choice harder. So... I can kind of see how doing this achieves that effect in a similar way, though. How, how's that? Because by player picks up big axe, they're uh -huh. like, fuck yeah, big axe. Mm -hmm. And they just pull thing, look through the whole game, everything else is shit, I got big axe. Right. When in reality, there's a bunch of stuff that could be seen just as good, but big axe is right there. Right. Like, I feel like people hyper fixated on mm -hmm. like the top end where like the mid range is not bad. Like real in, right. in the grand scheme. Right. Cause like shit like her, like the amount of like people are like, I'm going to put roar on Mesa. And I'm like, sure. Have another timer on Mesa. That sounds fun. When like, there's sure. so much, there's like, you could have, they want interesting stuff, but everyone just okay. went for the hammer to hammer the nail. So I, I want, I do want to point out that like I have rated condemn very highly. It is number seven of like the top 10. And that's for good reason. Cause it is like a, comp it's a compelling choice. It is a really good ability on a number of Warframes, including Mesa. But like, I personally think that roar is better. I could totally see why other people might personally think that condemn is better. But like the problem that we're coming to is that I do think that those are already actually compelling options and I, they're like that's like the reason why why you could say give condemn out right like they want the system to be used creatively but everyone just immediately went for like the quickest unga bunga option when they shouldn't have made that an option I, so i think it's fair that they shouldn't have made it an option but like I, we we can't live in a world where they they don't make it an option right like they already did and if they wanted if they wanted to remove roar from this list and make it but like let me, let me go down the world here if they remove Roar from this list and they make it Rhino Charge, then now it's Nidus' Larva is the highest rated ability on this list. So, okay. Well, now Nidus' Larva is, in my opinion, me as Brozyme, the top choice. If I think it's the top choice and I think it's what most people should go for and a lot of people go for Larva, a lot of people go for it and they're like, well, a lot of people go for Larva. We should make it Nidus' one instead so people don't go for that. Okay, well, now it's Pratia's Dispensary. Okay, well, a lot of people use Protea's dispensary. It has a lot of a lot of use cases, and like people really like it. And like, there's some places that gets used on here. And a lot of people that were using Roar, and a lot of people that were using Larva, now just use dispensary. Well, let's let's nerf it. Let's put out Protea's one. And then it's like, okay, well, let's go to Warcry. Well, a lot of people are using Warcry now because we got rid of Roar, Larva, and dispensary. So now people are going to use Warcry. It's like th this is it's not you can't just go with like what gets used a lot and then be like our system's bad because something gets used a lot. You want it to be used a lot. Like, I, I think it's fair for, like, people who are, like, trying to min-max are going to go for Roar. But, like, in the case where you're like, I want my Mesa to be more survivable, you go for Heroes Condemn. And I think that a lot of people, whenever there are compelling reasons to go for other choices, if you look at someone and you're like, oh, you chose Roar on Mesa. Why'd you go for that over Condemn? And then they go, oh, I felt like Mesa was already survivable enough without Condemn, and I just wanted more damage for Disruption. It's like, oh, okay. I understand your point and you understand why i went with why i went with condemn cool there are compelling reasons for both of these abilities but if you look at a mesa and it's like mesa why did the fuck did you go with mind control and they're like huh mind control go brr it's like oh you have no compelling reason for this outside of it's just stupid and it's just a meme okay well moving on then i guess we don't have to, an interesting conversation about the positives and negatives here it's just hilarious haha mind control like that it, it really it really put me the wrong way like i'm not gonna lie it really irked me the amount of people who just looked at it like 
all man now that they nerfed these top six all the abilities in the list are trash and it's like you're looking at the bottom eight and judging the entire list off of that and it really bothered me well it's it's not that well well some people are, well that here's the thing some people are min maxers whenever you like nerf because, the, whenever you nerf the top end that people were excited about like if people were excited about the top six abilities and you're like i can't wait to put these on a bunch of warframes i love min maxing i want my number to go up when number go up it make brain feel good whenever you get okay. rid of those then people Here feel bad is literally what Preston is doing right now like stop shunning people for wanting good options there are good options you just don't see them but the but no no but, but the problem isn't that there are good options that, that okay I want you to look at this from, from a, a different perspective what Preston is saying is is not that there are no longer any good options but that DE is trying to remove good options from the list of good options right like if, if they nerf roar like let's say they nerf it down to like it only gives a five percent damage buff suddenly that's not even an ability you could consider putting on anyone right so it's just not even an option you take roar from its top spot of being very usable and like very compelling on a number of warframes you just put it down on the list of things that i'm never gonna fucking use and like that's terrible that's the way worse option than have like having something that's dominant is fine with other compelling options like you can molt there's reasons to use molt sprint speed like the distraction is nice you could potentially have a heal at the augment there are reasons for mold if you took that over roar I would understand but like the problem is having bad abilities being a non-option whatsoever like they're just there's no compelling reasonable reason why you would take the ability other than haha -ha. and that that's the thing that it creates it creates more haha -ha, you chose roar even though it's garbage like that that's not good design so I'm gonna hold off on how much weight because a lot of this <clears throat> is based on assumption and numbers are important well yeah num out. numbers are extremely important so like but but even from even from like the baseline of it them okay let, let's say for example they come out and like exactly exactly what happened with the Zorus. a lot of people chose roar the stats say that a lot of people chose roar so we're gonna nerf it why why not instead take abilities that no one is using and bring them up a lot and the people that are using roar go hmm I want that because that literally means that like you took people they farm for Rhino they got the materials they got the stuff needed to put roar onto their warframes and then you change a different ability and make it really compelling and it brings those people back to do more farming and you made an ability better across the whole of the game so not only the warframe that had that ability is now better and probably should be because they had a bad ability and there shouldn't be any of those theoretically but also you're making the system more compelling over time by like nerfing or, or not by nerfing by buffing the low end on both the warframe that that ability is home to and on the list in general because one thing <laughs> like regarding the numbers that I'm kind of curious about right now in the current tier list, Roar is at an assumed 100% effectiveness based on like what it currently does. Yeah, correct? correct? Yeah, well, yeah. What percentage of a cut would bring Roar to a specific tier? Because with Roar literally cut in half, yeah. would that drop it down to the bottom eight? I no. don't think it would. No. But, that, but if it was cut to five percent <laughs> obviously it would but, but I okay. don't think they're gonna do that that's the problem though is you're always gonna have a dominating choice right um, and, and like there, there there's there's no point in like trying to change like the do, like what the dominating choice we, we we've gone over this you literally said it having more damage in the grand scheme of things really does not fucking matter indeed. at all right indeed but like if that's the choice that's like well that's really good I like having more damage people love it when number go up and there are a lot of warframes that value number go up because their number may be a little low um you take that and like that's compelling and that's fine that that can be a top option because if you take that top option and then you're like well let's just try and eat it a little bit let's just try and eat at it by giving these other really compelling options then that number will naturally go down by there just being so many very good options right it's like the um like the, the play rate of certain warframes right like if you if you took it's what we've talked about before with like Saren and ESO Saren is extremely good in ESO because her kit might as well be tailor-made for it 
she is a dps warframe that uses her one and three and occasionally casts her four and uses her two for some survival cap capabilities which means that she is not restricted by eso in any way shape or form it was basically tailor-made for her and de stated that upon reworking ember they wanted ember to try and fight saren in eso for the capability to do stuff there but she can't because ember uses her four to dps and she can't cast it and spam it a whole bunch because you're not allowed to do that in eso so they went at the problem from the wrong angle if all you did in eso was remove the thing where it limits how fast you can cast your abilities like your four and your two and your one and your three and all that shit, and you just had unlimited cast and there was no power restriction that diversifies the meta trying to put a warframe in there and like shoving them into a hole they don't fit in just doesn't work sometimes you need to change the shape of the hole if you want things to change and in, in this case like the shape of the hole is that people go oh damage good and the reason people go damage good is because while there's like a good grouping option and there's a good resource option and there's like a melee option on this list and like resonator also serves like a, a more niche purpose as well there are some things that aren't on this list that they could put on this list to change the shape of the hole so you can put different things in it like it, it, it's a problem where like they're they're going at it from the wrong angle and it doesn't benefit the design of this system or the game. Also, their idea of difficulty is never go up, so it's a natural choice. Well, yeah, MR8. The, the MR8 thing is kind of whatever. I don't really care about the MR8 thing that much. I think it is kind of funny, though. Also, Freeze, are you still here? Yeah, I am. Okay. I'm just doing a thing. Digesting. Okay, fair information. enough. Information. Yeah, that's valid. Um. I feel like we've had this discussion once, twice, even three times about DE or about 58 times before about DE. Yeah, you're not wrong, Plague. I'm I'm more often than not taking the like the the hypothetical idea of like what DE probably wants out of it. Right. And like I can see it. Like because from DE's perspective, I don't understand why Defy is there. I don't get it. Yeah, I don't get it at all. Especially because Defy's armor is already capped. That's what makes it double confusing. Like, that feels like they listen to some random fucking, th like, forum thread just out of nowhere randomly. Yeah. And then the other ones were from, like, the actual information. Yeah. But, like, e even still, g given this feedback, it was apparent in player feedback and playtesting that these infused Warframe abilities had the potential to be the overwhelming choice, which is not ideal. Instead of changing the ability outright due to those concerns, we decided to give them slight rules when infused. And this is just going about the problem the wrong way. It was apparent that these abilities had the potential to be the overwhelming choice. If these abilities had the potential to be the overwhelming choice, the... No. Ah, wrong. The right thing to do is to remove them. Right? Like, if that's what they really think about it, then the right thing is to remove them or to give other compelling options in the system because if they just like and this is okay i want i want to be really clear here this thing i'm about to say would be in bad faith but like legitimately this is this is a way to look at it if they just want this system to contain a bunch of whatever or bad choices they have that power to do that but if they want it to be a compelling system that players love to engage with that's like really interesting and you can do a lot with the options need to be compelling. Like we've gone over a bajillion different buffs you could make to a variety of things on this list that where suddenly you go, oh shit, dude, I don't know if I want Roar. I could I could take Mag and like with how that got buffed, I could generate a lot of energy orbs and like that's really powerful. And it's like also crowd control. So it's like maybe slightly better than dispensary in some situations. And it's like, there's a lot of interesting things you can do there, right? Like in the case, let's say just for Rhino, Rhino, as a Warframe, you're like, do I take pull if they were to buff it to make it so enemies that get pulled have a high chance to drop energy orbs? Well, pull can do two different things for me. It can do a similar thing to dispensary, which is fix my energy economy in a lot of cases, but also it can pull enemies together for the purposes of being ironclad Rhino and charging through enemies and getting a very, very large armor buff. So it can kind of combine two things that I might really want, which makes it suddenly a compelling option for Rhino. So this gets a much higher grade on Rhino than nothing because it's useless right now. 
And we have a link to the changes to exclamation discord. It's in the Warframe updates channel. But yeah, in, instead of going through and making these options more compelling, like being like, okay, no one's excited for Nyx's mind control. Let's make it Nyx's two. Oh, Nyx's two? Shit. There's a lot of Warframes. Like Nyx doesn't use that ability very well, but there's other Warframes that build that way kind of in general. That would be really happy to have an ability like that. That's suddenly a really compelling option on those Warframes instead of these just Ds all across the fucking board because this ability blows. What all got nerfed? Uh, Roar, Eclipse, Warcry, Dispenser, Larva, and Defy. Defy's the odd one out here. But this is a bad ability. Also, there's a command. Thank you, Para. Because, like... Which abilities are a D across the board? That is... These. Uh, ignore Zaku. Warframe is not out. We do not know how they are yet. Uh, but uh, Ember through Zephyr here are Ds across the board. These abilities are just bad. And if these well, a lot of these abilities you can easily buff or change. They're suddenly compelling. What if Airburst just did the suck, but like... Yeah. What, what if... What if... What, what if... Okay. Let me blow everyone's mind. What if Airburst did like the zoop that Nidus' larva does, but also could do the blow that Nidus' Zar larva does not do? Whoa, compelling ability. Holy shit. What if bad ability, good? Then suddenly this ability is like competing with Nidus' larva. And like there's probably some Warframes that like it better and some Warframes that don't. And it's like, okay, hey, that's great. pretty good. I love that. I love having compelling options. Because literally, the only of that list, the only ones I feel like you could not fix are Loki and Renan. Because yeah. Loki requires a full on fucking kit rework. They're like, he's a mess. He needs help. Yeah. Uh, call him a hotline. Revenant, his one is too tied to the identity of the Warframe and isn't really that great regardless on his own. Yeah. And his two, no. Yeah. No, absolutely not. No. I mean, le legitimately on Reeve, what's the percentage damage it does right now? It's like 8%, right? It's like garbage. Who cares? It, it's, <laughs> it's not very good. But like legitimately may bump it up to like 20%. And it's like, well, I mean, 20% percentage damage is not that bad. Like make it at least a little more compelling, right? Like you can buff it up and have it like maybe not be a top tier choice. That's like the problem, right? These things don't need to be buffed up to be like a top tier choice. Because like the top tier choice is like they're, they're going to exist one way or another. But like trying to buff things so that they're like, you know, competing with other options is the important bit here. Because like, it would be dope if it was a Wukong clone, but stationary. That doesn't fit with the theme they want Loki to be in. Yeah. Because if Decoy was just a fucking Giga Turret, that's not what they want Loki to be. He's supposed to be like the trickster Warframe. Yeah. Because like part of his kit design is that he's a Warframe that doesn't have any damage abilities. Yeah, but like outside of radial disarm, like doing yeah. He, okay. AC damage. He, here's here's the thing for Decoy you could even do: make Decoy's range way bigger than Oct Octavia's Resonator and make it invincible like Octavia's Resonator. Loki's a way easier Warframe to acquire than Octavia in general. So it's like, maybe you have Loki around and don't really want to farm Octavia. Like, maybe that's actually a compelling option for that kind of a niche. Right? Like, if you just need enemies to not shoot at you, it's like, this ability has more range, but it can't move around and collect enemies, and it's invincible. So it's going to last its full duration. It's like, okay, I mean, you know... The only other thing is that obviously you'd have to like line of sight that shit if it doesn't already. I mean, Resonator's not even line of sight. I don't think. Is it? Is Resonator line of sight? I don't think it is. Yeah, but if Decoy has like double the range of Resonator, that's some like Mirage Forge shenanigans from back in the day. I mean, okay, I agree with you, but however, that's not even that good right now. That doesn't mean that will not be a problem in the future. You have to. Mm. I mean, we have we have we have death on that scale as it stands. Because we have death on that scale, mm. but we got to play the game to do that. Right. Whereas Loki hitting one like every minute, and everyone just AFKing an interception. I don't think De would like that. I mean, you just described interception with Limbo. Limbo has to hit two buttons. <laughs> 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 and his cooldowns are a lot shorter. 
<laughs> I mean, like... That's literally why Equinox hasn't been nerfed, by the way. Mm. Equinox has to hit two button and charge. <laughs> Ooh. But that's like... Equ right? It's the smallest bit of gameplay that just placing a decoy doesn't have. Right. But like, like DE wants the bare minimum input from the player. You're at all. Least. You're gonna go invisible. Uh huh. That's two buttons. I don't know, man. If you press one, who okay. Wants to be invisible? We cannot pretend that Loki can't just hit two and E and clear any exterminate and any survival for that matter. But you know what? You know what that sound is? That's gameplay. <laughs> That's gameplay. Oh yeah. That's some gameplay. It's some, you're uh, holding W and you're mashing The sound e. of me creating a gameplay. macro that mashes E while I hold E. Whoa there, Hoser. You're, you, might be, you might be augmenting the game right there. I can't have to do that. <laughs> but like, see, that's, that's, that's the kind of shit I'm talking about, right? Is like, you can fix a lot of these abilities and it actually won't be that insane. You can, you can legitimately do it. It's not, it's not that insane at all to fix a lot of these abilities and get a lot more compelling options out of this system. And like you even said it earlier, Ember's Fire Blast, not compelling right now at all to me. It does not strip enough armor and it's like blowing enemies away, which is not good. And it's like very, very whatever. If you suddenly made it so that Fire Blast always worked at the full effectiveness of what it currently is now, like if it was always what Ember's 3 is when she's at full meter, then it's like, that's a compelling armor strip suddenly. That's a 100% armor strip. That's an AoE. That's pretty solid. I, I might choose same that in thing. a couple of cases. <laughs> exact same thing for Thermal Sunder. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, Thermal Sunder full effectiveness. And it's like, that's a pretty compelling ability. That's like, that could be a pretty large range freeze. I like that. But then that makes it better than Ember. Fucking buff it on Ember. I don't even use Ember's three on Ember. I turn my two off and turn it back on. Because that's faster. How's Loki on the chart? All Ds. Absolutely terrible. Like, the, the, like, there's a lot of abilities under here that could just be buffed. Like, even, like, okay. Frost Ice Wave. This is, like, a difficult one to fix. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay. Oh, I got it. I got it. I got it. Guys, I got it. Okay, you guys know how... Um. Okay. Give it a thousand base damage. Okay, okay, you guys with me here? Staying with me so far? Thousand base damage. The more enemies it hits, the more damage it does. Sticks for three seconds, so you can mash it. Whoa, give it damage? Wild. I know, isn't that fucking crazy? No, I'm not saying I still wouldn't like it. Because it's literally just freeze, but bigger, but it's smaller than his four. But that's a problem with frost. Because yeah. frost is like, yeah, I have my four. It's okay. My two is that, but smaller and shittier. Yeah. My like, one is that, but smaller and shittier. <laughs> yeah. You can't give damage abilities damage. I know, right? Is it 1k base damage a decent amount? It is. But it's, it's not like actually, is... it's not like actually good. It still needs to scale. And snow globe is dog shit for 99% of the content because unless I'm doing a world record, I'm, I'm a fucking bitch that has to hit yeah. three every three. Like seconds if, if, if we really need, okay, if we really need to talk about it, I'm just gonna fix frost real quick, and all of you are gonna be fucking mad because frost is never gonna get good changes. You do what I just said to ice wave. Whenever you hit ice wave, the more enemies it hits, it gets a damage multiplier for each enemy hit, and it it, it lasts for like three seconds base on like going over to your next cast of your two. So if you have a huge group of enemies, you can spam two and the damage will scale up and kill everybody. Okay, cool, we got that. Two's fixed. That's pretty fucking solid as an ability. On his three, just keep it the fucking same. Just keep it the same, except you can hold three and charge it like Garuda's one to constantly put a shitload of health into it by holding it and he just stop the animation and have him hold his arms out so he can charge up his bubble to have a lot of defense. That extends the invincibility timer and lets it scale off the enemies around him also, which makes it way less of a bitch to maintain. Cool, we fixed his May three, even though it's an ability that didn't really need a buff. May I add? 
Go on. Can you charge it to please God let us place it on things? It's not the same as Gar is too, because you're not giving them DR, you're giving them a snow globe. Yeah. You're I giving mean, them a shield with a health number. So it's different enough. Okay. Just let us play through on things. Okay, so I would agree with you. However, take his four and integrate the uh augment into it, but just make it add up. Just give it addition up to a cap of like ten thousand. So you hit four and you get ice armor uh, and you can let you can keep getting ice armor from the enemies up to like 10k so you have some bulk to you you have a freeze that's also a little bit of an armor strip that also gives you some bulk on your four you have a shield for defense objectives and things that you can charge up when needed you have a two that gives you decent scaling damage and you have a one that has a really good augment okay and then i can give you the one too because i know you forgot his passive so i'll give it to you, you ready okay this one. He has, I know. I know his passive. I know his passive. Don't. I. I you would know tell what you. It is. Yeah, it's terrible. You forgot it on purpose. Um, his his new passive would be like coolant leak, but double the range, and all of his damage naturally cold frosts. Sure. Yeah. Totally reasonable. So like rubble, kind of like rubble. Yeah. But it, it's then, even like we just fixed like that makes frost like a pretty fucking good warframe. And guess what? I want to make the I want to make this really fucking clear. That is like a pretty low level thing for DE to do. There are no like ability switch outs or anything like that. It still is work. I want to clarify that it is still is work. But like you're not changing any animations. You're just changing functionality and maybe giving him like a little number counter for his two. That's it. That's like the whole thing. Did you mention anything about his one? Because I can add something that'll make it better. I mean, there's there's a lot of extra stuff you could do to that, but like just on, just on a base level, I think we like succeeded in making Frost a Warframe anyone would fucking want to play. And it also like keeps like you know what Frost does already fully intact. Because like you know what his one does on the ground? Yeah. Like what if when you hit an enemy with his one, it leaves like a fucking cool cloud of air? So like, you know how enemies, they step on his one, they slow down. Well, what if they walk through the cloud that slows down? So it's still useful outside of the ground. Sure. Yeah, you could do that. But yeah, I want Frost to be good. Yeah, he's, no. just, a, he's just a bitch. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He, he's just old. Frost is an old man Warframe. He is like one of the very early Warframes that were released in the game. He's an old man. He needs help. But like, yeah, you could just fix Frost by doing that. It, it's like, it, it's very easy to come up with. You keep him like basically the same uh but like there's a lot of that right there's a lot of that you could fix a lot of warframes and you could fix a, like even like not even fixing a lot of warframes just fix a lot of the abilities that are on this list a lot of the abilities i'll be right back I used to... <laughs> fair <laughs> i resemble that remark that we call it diamond dust nice really goes to show half of the starting eight are good and the other half are absolute dog shit. well yeah Give him some tennis balls for his walker. Give that old man a cane. Please stop praying for my grandfather. He keeps making snow globes and talking about ye old freeze days. We know Ember's three is gonna act like it will be with full meter. Do we not know? We we te technically we don't know. So they could surprise us and do that, which makes, by the way, that thermal thunder would be way better abilities if that were to happen. Um, but like we just don't know yet, and I feel like that would be something they would mention, right? That would have been in the notes. Someone link the nerfs. Uh, do exclamation Hellman. How about Snow Globe Augment that sticks to Frost and is refreshable? No. That's just annoying. Your teammates can't shoot through that. Okay. What was my after the discussion of Hellman restoring too? No idea. Side question. But yeah, like, what is the plan for after the discussion of the also, Hellmeet? Also, how Ember Risk got by too? making heat procs better. Uh, cold procs should radiate the coolant leak effect of right. every enemy that is cold proc. Uh, I, okay, sure. I agree, but I think we're losing the plot here. Like, buff yes. buffing Frost <laughs> is kind of a side tangent. Like, it's a thing they could and should do, but it's more about making this new Hellmeet system better. Yes. <laughs> It's just, it's just, it makes me sad because like we have, there's such potential in these abilities and everyone's like talking about it so excitedly, like, oh yeah, this is going to be good. This is going to be a fucking, I want to put Roar on this. I want to put Nidus' Larva on this. I, I want Larva on Protea. That's going to be sick. That Warframe was like a little underwhelming, but like Larva is going to boost her up. Like we're going to get some cool shit going down. 
and then fucking these abilities will be nerfed you guys seemed excited about them so we're they're gonna be shittier whenever it comes out sorry everybody like buff the garbage abilities like this makes me way less excited like i i was legitimately i want to make this really fucking clear i was like oh shit what warframe should i feed to helmet first because there's a lot of things that i want to try but like this shit i'm just gonna feed it wisp first because they're not nerfing breach surge and i guess i'll do breach surge garuda first and it's like that's not good i don't want to be not excited to put these abilities on things i want to be excited to put other abilities on things like if this post let's live in a world where this post is completely different and it's like because of player feedback we decided to change these five abilities and boost them up or change them to other abilities on warframes we feel will be a better fit for the system if they made if they were like six new abilities and there were like six new very compelling options for the system it'd be like oh fuck, i have to reevaluate oh shit. like come on come on like you're killing the hype for this system before it's out before it's out by just making a decision that just doesn't make any fucking sense <laughs> you watched the spreadsheet vid and was like oh fuck but like that's that's the wrong info okay i want to make it really clear that is the wrong information to glean from this spreadsheet if if you look at this and you're like if, if you're de and you look at this and you're like everything as it should be in perfect balance that this shit right here in perfect balance all these fucking d ranks and then i scroll down and they go whoa that's a lot of things people might consider using and might actually fucking use hold on a minute wait whoa hold on no no we can't be doing that dude bro you gotta have no fucking choice hold on we, there was like some shitty choices up here and i was okay with that but we can't be doing these fucking options whoa like that like this is what it should i literally go over in that video where i'm like this looks a little rough but this looks really solid i wish that this area looked like this area and de heard this area bad this area good whoa calm down Chaz. like come on I love surfer dude D. It's very frustrating. It's very, very frustrating to have it to have it be this way. Why defy though? No one knows. Does anyone have any okay? I I really want to I'm gonna double point this out. I've said it a couple times. Okay. Roar damage go down. Eclipse damage go down, damage reduction go down, war cry attack speed go down. Duration reduced on Dispenser, Radius reduced on Larva, Wukong, Armor capped. Did you guys know that Defy already has this? Did you know it's already capped? It should say Armor cap capped. Yeah. Like, <laughs> hmm, doing me a big fucking confuse here. I don't know, what, what did they mean by this? What do you mean? What does this mean? I don't know what this means. Capped to what? Lower? Higher? Like, is this, what is this change? They are testing slash playing around with the values for each. Line. Yeah. Do they know it has a cap? I'm not sure anymore. Like, I, and I want to make it really clear. This is Wukong's Defy. Let's look at this on my tier list. Obviously, like, my opinion is not like the only one that fucking matters or some stupid bullshit like that. But like, okay, three C's. Everything I don't say is a D. A B rank. Ooh, on Nezha. Ooh, on Rhino as well, a B rank. Two B ranks, three C ranks. Rest of them are D's. Was this ability going to fucking take over the meta? Nobody fucking told me. What does it do that I don't know about? All right, I'm going to hit you with it. You ready? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a forum thread. I'm not going to link it because it's an idea. It's more of an idea in your head. Okay. There was a forum thread. Okay. And they said, oh my God, this ability, it's going to make the squishy Warframes not squishy. <gasps> Boom! Nerf Fuck. that shit. Holy shit. <laughs> Holy shit, dude. <laughs> Whoa, there you hoser. You can't be fucking, you can't be doing that. Oh, you man. That, things are going to be a little too crazy. Chaz, so you can't be doing that now. Manchi. You can't be just be running around in Manchi and it's already three. They're going to fucking kick your ass. Yeah, you got to fucking get out of here with this. 
Jesus Christ. Yeah, this shit is mind-blowingly stupid. Absolutely mind-blowingly stupid. I feel so bad for Megan. Megan has had to deliver such bad fucking takes in recent memory, and I feel so bad for her because it's not her fault. I'm 100% certain this is not Megan's fault, and she has had to deliver such shitty takes recently. The Zorus was also delivered by her, and I feel so bad for her. Yeah, nobody should be shitting on Megan for this. But, like, yeah. Fuck. The worst fucking Canadian. I'm just like, that's just, I'm talking kind of like how my, my family does when they talk on the phone. <laughs> and just like how I remember people used to talk up north. Because I used to live in Wisconsin. <laughs> that's fair. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Never mind. Yeah. That's fair enough. Yes. Because like, I remember we literally go up there <laughs> for like a quick trip. And <laughs> literally the first person, they're like, hey, man, how you doing? Don't you know? I'm like, oh, dear God. <laughs> Yeah, I can't believe this shit, though. Like, holy fuck. It, this is, like, such a bad take. This is going on YouTube, obviously, for obvious reasons. But, like, so mind-blowingly disappointing. I'm so fucking disappointed. I, I, I want so badly to be excited for this system. But, like, nerfs before it even comes out make it really hard. MR changes. Yeah, the MR going to 8 is hilarious, but honestly, not a big deal. I'm just gonna, like, my take is basically solidified at I'm not as angry about it, and I'm mostly holding off my potential outrage for the severity of the numbers. Because if it's like an 80% cut, I don't give a fuck. If it's like a 10%, if it, oh, wait, no. If it's like cut to 80%, let me rephrase that. Mm. They're like if they're cutting 20% off of the power of the ability, I don't give a shit. But if they're cutting it down to like 10 down to like 10% of mm. what it was, obviously that's fucking terrible. Right. Here's the here's the thing. If they if they cut 20% off of any of these abilities, I'm going to tell you right now this list is exactly the fucking same. Yeah, that's why I, that's why I really don't get care as much. Right. Cuz if it's like a, if it's like a love tap, then sure. Mm, but that <laughs> That's just like, yeah, exactly, exactly. Sarakin has it exactly correct in chat. Why even do it? Why bother? You just, like, you're just, you're just creating what is happening right now where like they're being really vague and nerfing these abilities. And it's like, okay, if it's, we're either very angry about this because you're nerfing the shit out of them and making these non choices, or you're not nerfing these enough to make a difference both ways are bad and it's anti-hype exactly saturn like you have this big fucking update coming out in six days this big awesome super hyped no no downpour like no no bad things about it that we have seen in any real way until now and it's like let's deliver some bad news six days before the update why for what fucking reason like it's literally like this is based on had the potential to be the overwhelming choice. They don't even know. They don't even have the data that they could normally go off of. It's based on hearsay. Like what is it based on? Me and other fucking YouTubers making a tier list of what I think is going to be the best? Because if whatever I think is going to be the best gets nerfed, then like what the fuck? And like, if, if it's like me and a bunch of YouTubers that are like creating this, or if there's like a bunch of other things, like, guess what? Like I, I'm in the creator program. They're very allowed to just ask me a question, ask the other YouTubers that make videos like this a question. Like, why are those really good abilities? What abilities are bad? How can we fix this? You have a whole community of people that like have the knowledge on this. If you think the community is going to be in a certain way. And it's like, well, what can we do to change that? It's like, well, you can give us this option. It's like, oh, that's a compelling option. What's that? What about this option? That's also a compelling option that might change the list. It's like, yeah, it's an entire creator program full of people that like do the thing. And like, obviously some people in the creator program, like probably don't care too much about what abilities are available and like the stats of it and stuff. But there are people like me who are in that program that do care.
he doesn't understand the difference between speculation and feedback is what we learned today. Yeah, my like I want to make it really clear. Like, if they're considering this to be my feedback, this is like abilities I'm excited for, abilities I'm not excited for. And I feel like it should be very obvious if I was a developer. Abilities that people aren't excited for, I'd want to be like, oh, people should be excited for those. We need to fix the thing that people aren't excited about, not the thing that people are excited about. Is this better than day one nerfs, though? No. I actually don't think so. Not your first Rodeo Bros, you know they don't ask. They can start at any time. I'm already under NDA. He's under NDA, but I'm not. So in the new update, the Lotus, she fucking kills Godzilla. Damn it. <laughs> Yeah, this is a day negative seven nerf. And it's it's just anti-hype for the update. Makes me fucking sad. <laughs> Makes me fucking sad. So what got changed? These six abilities are nerfed when put on other Warframes. And they're either nerfed so much they become not an option, or they're nerfed like so little that it doesn't matter and there's still amazing choices that you're going to take anyway <sighs> or they goldilocks nerf it where it's about the same as you're like heroes ha one and Her you're like, on. Maybe? how would you fix the bad abilities after all de seems to take a lot of stock in your opinion i don't think de is only watching me or some like narcissistic shit like that because that'd be ridiculous but we did just spend about a half an hour going through and fixing a bunch of the shit abilities on this list and i don't really want to do it again why would you nerf Nidus, though? Because it's one of the best abilities on the list, like, by far. Like, I mean, like, I, like, look at it. It's, like, way up here. It has nine A's and 12 B's. Pretty fucking good. And, I, like, if you don't understand why Larva is good, I have a whole video about that. How to fix Nyx's mind control. Switch it to her, too. Done. We did it. Yeah, Nidus, yeah, and also, yeah, some situations where it's like, Nidus's 2 is better than Korra's 2, so we would take it over Korra's 2. So if they super nerf Larva, I just choose fucking Korra's 2. That's like, I mean, they needlessly fucking nerfed Larva, I guess, so I guess I'll just go with Korra's 2, which is the same fucking thing. Yeah, Chorus 2 is better than Nidus is on some Warframes already, which is worth noting. Now they're going to nerf Chorus 2? I don't know, man. Chorus 2 is pretty far down here. As long as I don't change this fucking tier list, maybe it won't change. What has an MR8 done? Not a lot. I mean, like, well, a lot, but also not a lot. Take my money. JLD, thank you for the resub. Much appreciated. Uh, also, Twilight, Shroomy, uh, that one guy, uh, S Sebastian, Staple, thank you for all the bits. Much appreciated. Next question, how to fix Spectra Rage? I mean, you can give it an effect. Straight up. Spectra, yeah, Spectra Rage can become a damage-adding ability while you're in it. Like you, There's simple things you can do to make some abilities that have no merit whatsoever better. You hear about Burger King? I retweeted that shit. It's terrible. Wukong's pretty far down, so yeah, I don't know where this came from. This prob th this shit, nerfing Defy, if this is even a nerf, because this is already a thing that is on Defy. Um, nerfing Defy, this has to have come from, like, some guy on Twitter. Like, literally one guy. Like, you remember how, like, one guy made it so that the uh, Universal Medallions don't work on Conclave? That's That feels like that's where this came from. Literally one guy. Apparently it was AGGP. He would think this ability is good. 
It makes squishy frames not squishy, I swear. Yeah, no, not at all. This ability's garbage. Disappointed? Am I, am I, would I be disappointed that this is nerfed? No, it was already not a thing I was going to choose. It's a bad fucking ability. But yeah. 1500 armor isn't even that good. It really isn't. Colonel War and Wukong, yeah. Dude, it's almost like it's like better than two Valkyrie Primes oh, stapled together. Oh. Man. What happened to Burger King? You can check my Twitter. Yeah, we already have Arcane's for armor. How do I find the subscriber copy of that spreadsheet, please? Oh, uh, go into the content council once you have the Twitch subscriber role, and then it's pinned. Someone just mentioned Firewalker Limbo with a Firewalker Augment. That's funny. I need to look at the, the, the fucking Firewalker Augment. I, I forgot what it is. Oh, it's I the one where you charge it up. It, yeah, you charge it up and you can, you can kick a wall of flame out that does like built up damage. Sure, let's the current mm. partners again. Yeah, there should be. But yeah, like. Let's not, guys, let's not make this like a fucking AGGP chat. It's better to just forget. Oh, uh, but yeah. Like, Jesus. God, it's so, it's so unfortunate. Accumulate hey, that's pretty good. Deals, unleashing it in the oh, so you just freeze them in time and then just walk? Well, it's not even, that. it's not even necessarily freeze them. You just go into the rift and you can deal damage to them with that while you're in the rift. So you, so you never have to leave the rift to kill enemies, basically. Well, yeah, but if they're frozen, you can you can walk on them, charge it as much as you want. That's and true. And then when you unleash it, they also have to stand on where you unleashed it. <laughs> yeah. That is a quality meme. I'll give it that. Yeah. Watch Gruda's combo and not get nerfed because their own number shows she isn't a popular frame. I don't know. Are you ready for it? I'm gonna say it. What? Breach Surge, no longer procced by status effects. Can you fucking imagine? That'd be so funny. Because I'm like, that video is not going to happen until after launch because I actually have to put it on to Garuda and like get the build together and like get it all working. And then they're going to be like, this no longer works. We didn't know. Like, Jesus fucking Christ. Do a cool, unique combo. We'll nerf it, okay? Can you politely not do that video? No. DE's bad decisions are not my fault. It's also, yeah, it's also not like only I know the combo. Also true. Will this be a video? Yeah, this will be a video as well. I'll just highlight it up. Like, good lord. I can't believe this shit. Come on. We want creativity, but only things we think are creative. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, good lord. Really fucking unfortunate. 